thank you guys very much. And uh, actually, I just just a quick freaking round of applause for everybody else that presented because you guys are all awesome. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm Brad Baker. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Works Electric, and we build pretty much the sweetest scooter known to man right here. Uh, this this guy's called the Rover. And uh, if you think I'm full of it, we're going to have test rides after we're done here. And please, come out, ride it. I don't care what you do with it. Just bring it back. So yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, so you know, when, I, when I was starting this, I, uh, you know, I, I was going to get into this big philosophical user experience kind of thing. And then I realized I was coming to a tech meetup. And uh, maybe that wasn't the best idea. So. Uh, First thing I'm going to do, we're going to see if I have enough time to do that, because it's a big deal, but I'm going to slam through the specs on this bad boy. And I hope you can all see it. If you can't, come out later and you can touch it, you know, not in the bad spots, but you can touch it later and, uh, and you'll love it. So this is an electric vehicle, all right, this is an electric scooter. This can be ridden in the standing or seated position. I don't have the seat attachment right now, but it goes right in this spot right here. It sits about yay high. You can adjust it. When you put that seat atta attachment in, this thing is like the easiest thing to ride on the freaking planet. So uh, my wife's grandparents, or, or my wife's parents and grandparents, so her 94-year-old grandma took this thing out for a ride around the block. And she crashed it like three or four times, but she took it out. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, one of the really cool features with this vehicle is this whole front end actually folds down right like that. And when you fold the front end down, you got a handle right here, and you got a handle right here, and it, it is heavy, it's about 95 pounds, but it can be picked up. And for a vehicle that can go 35 miles an hour and a range of 25 miles, that does not happen. There are no vehicles that can do that anywhere. So, also I wanna say, just, just because I have never seen Focus Designs Unicycle before, and that is the coolest thing in the world. So that's like 1800 bucks for something that can do that. That's a bargain. You should all freaking buy one. Uh, now, mine's a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's a hand-built machine. And uh, this, this particular one goes for about uh, $57.50. Uh, but our space is uh, a lot in the commercial and industrial spaces, also associated with law enforcement, uh, tourism and recreation. So basically, kind of like they're you know, t saying that the Segway is the, the dumbest thing known to man. I agree with that. And, you know, we have different markets, uh, but uh, in tourism and recreation, we find pretty consistently uh, that this particular vehicle uh, uh, has a lot more desirability than, uh, than that Segway. Uh, so anyway, um, let me give you some more specs. 35 miles an hour, 25 mile range. It can be fast charged in under an hour. Standard charge is five hours. I got to be honest. There hasn't been a single day where I've ridden this thing 25 miles. Like I, I ride it all over the place. So really what happens is you ride it all day, you're exhausted, you come home, you plug it in, standard wall outlet, you're good to go the next day. So the recharge thing, everybody talks about that. It's not a big deal. Just chill out. So, God. <laughs> um, and the other cool thing, the vehicle is constructed entirely out of aircraft grade aluminum. So this thing is built like a tank. That's why it looks, looks so monstrous, but it only weighs 95 pounds. Uh, let's see, what else? What else we got going on? We got a little phone cradle up front here. You can pop your phone in there and uh, use your, all your GPS apps and you know, be able to monitor your speed, your odometer, everything like that. Works out real nice. So I don't know how much more time I have, but one of the big things that I wanted to get in, into this with uh, and the philosophical thing has to do with user experience. Okay, so I come from a motorcycle background and uh, I've lived in Portland for a long time and finally I came to that space where I was like, all right, I guess scooters kind of make sense. I guess there's a practicality associated with a scooter and I guess in certain situations uh, it would work better than a 400 pound motorcycle. Uh, but I had a really big beef with scooters. And I couldn't find out why. And so I wrote down a little list of all those things that I had a problem with about scooters. And you know, it had things to do with styling, 
the way you sit on a machine, on the machine, the way it sounds, you know, how, how big your head looks. In the, in the giant helmet compared to how small the scooter is. You know, you like a little mushroom man driving down the street, you know. And, you know, all those things, they weren't really, really a big issue in of themselves. But uh, when you put them all together, it's a really big deal. And really what it amounts to is an extremely weak and lame user experience, okay. I like riding motorcycles because they're sweet, okay. I got money, I can buy a car, I can be practical, you know, I can do that space. I choose to ride, ride a motorcycle because it's awesome. And we live in the US, we're a first world country, and I hate to break it to anybody that thinks that practical is the way to go with scooters, because it's not. Maybe in China, but good luck. And uh, so the whole deal with this, the whole reason that I designed this vehicle the way that I did, uh, was because I didn't find a single scooter that appealed to me in a visceral sense. I didn't, I have nev never found a scooter, okay, I've never found a scooter that's totally awesome, okay? And I wanted to build one that what actually was. So this is what we got. I urge you to come out and take a ride because uh, I'm right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Yes. What stage are you at as far as production and retail? Uh, we're out there. Uh, so we got about 35 vehicles in the wild right now. Uh, we got our first vehicle to the first customer in June of last year. So uh, they are all hand built right now. We just got a real modest shop over in Garden Home and uh, we pump them out one at a time. So. Are they made yeah. to order? They are, yeah. Mm -hmm. About four week lead time right now. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So there's probably a lot of you that might have a general idea about what, you know, what the regulations are on something like this. And uh, actually, the state regulations are different from state to state. But uh, in Oregon, the top speed for a vehicle like this is 24 miles an hour. Okay. So when we deal with customers that are looking to ride them on the streets, we can do one of two things. Uh, well, one of three things. One, we can gear it down. Uh, to give them uh, a more powerful low end and then conform with the top speed. Uh, two, we can digitally govern the vehicle. Or three, we can just tell them not to go fast, you know, because <laughs> that's, that's on them, you know. Uh, so yeah, actually, it's, it's fully legal uh, to ride on the streets as long as it conforms to that top speed. Uh, and as long as it does, uh, you can ride it in the bicycle lanes on the side of the road. You can actually ride it on the bicycle trails uh, in Oregon. Uh, some of them you can't, but most of them you can. Uh, additionally, you can ride it on the shoulder of the road, and then on some roads where the speed limit is low enough, uh, I believe 25 miles an hour, maybe 35, you can actually ride it in the road too. So, oh yeah, no license. Uh, no, in Oregon, no license is required. You gotta be over 16, uh, no registration, uh, no insurance, no nothing like that. So you can buy the vehicle and just take off on it. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll scale production. Uh, I will not drop my price. <laughs> um, you know, so comparatively speaking, uh, like these gentlemen were saying, uh, you know, segways go for about seven grand. Uh, this vehicle smokes that thing in every way, shape and form. Uh, and it costs more than a grand less. Uh, so we're, we're moving into a more of an industrial and commercial space, you know, with an extremely high reliab reliability vehicle. Uh, so yes, we, we will scale, but we're going to modulate it very carefully. So. Thank you very much, Brad.